In today's vlog, I'm going to bring you with me to explore Paris. No, not the famous Paris, but a city in the Ontario countryside that bears the same name. We are going to walk the streets, shop in a 19th century market, eat well, and enjoy a beautiful summer day. Oh, and in the end, there is still something that will surprise you about this city. Paris is a city of 15,000 inhabitants located 110 kilometers from Toronto, on the banks of the Grand River. The name does not come from any resemblance to the French capital, but because a large reserve of gypsum was found here, which is also called Plaster of Paris. And speaking of building materials, the city is known as Canada's capital of cobblestone, because there is a large concentration of houses built with stones here. image of the city is without a doubt the rear of the buildings on Grand River Street, the main street, that faces the river. As the street is not very long, there are not many buildings either. But here we find some restaurant balconies that I highly recommend going if you want to enjoy the river. And speaking of the Grand River, it really is the big star of the city, as many come to Paris to go down the river, whether by kayaks, boats or tubes. Even if you want to stay dry on your tour, I recommend exploring the city's bridges, which offer the best beautiful views of the river always paired with flower pots. In fact, explore the whole city, because you will find different things, from local shops to trail entrances. but what we really wanted was to relax by the river, and for that we found a restaurant with a spectacular view. For me, the view was already enough for a memorable lunch, but I have to say that the food was up to par. We started with sangrias, as the day was very hot. I ordered a steak and blue cheese pizza, which was delicious. Need to mention that the base sauce was an Alfredo, instead of the traditional tomato sauce. And what a great idea! It matched very well. And with the pizza, they served a Caesar salad, which to my pleasant surprise included bacon crisps. Chris ordered a rib steak with potatoes. In addition to the dish being more generous than what we are used to in Toronto, the meat was amazing and fell apart on the fork. caught my attention is how the locals show their pride of the city, preserving and exhibiting its history. Here, for example, you can find this bell from the year 1874, which used to ring in the city to mark important times of the day or historical facts. 
One of the last times it played was to celebrate the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. There is also this monument dedicated to the city's fighters in the Second World War. But the best way to understand the passion of the locals for Paris is to visit the city's museum. Here you can find models of traditional Parisian houses, samples of local resources, and even personal belongings of residents from the past. My favorite part was the exhibition of military clothing, worn by ex-soldiers from the city of Paris, which even includes Second World War uniforms. After the museum, we went to visit the Paris Wincy Mills Market, which has been in operation since 1889. On the outside, it still preserves its original architecture. Inside, it's a mix of old and new. With cafes, delicatessens, shops selling different items, and an antique shop that is well worth a visit. opportunity, of course, to buy food. satisfy our craving for ice cream, we went to Chocolate Sensations, a traditional Parisian chocolate shop that also offers ice cream. There is one more curiosity about Paris that I need to show you. It was in this house in Brentford, a city close to Paris, that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1874. Two years later, he made the first long-distance call in history to Paris. This house belonged to the Bell family, who moved to the United States not long after Alexander's invention. In 1909, it was transformed in a museum, and today it houses various personal belongings of the inventor and family furniture. Music 